Ooh, he's the best thing that has ever happened to me. Amen. Amen. That's why I love standing here saying, and wherever I am, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice. And again, I say we will rejoice and be glad in it. Are you glad? Come to your feet then. Stand up. Loosen up. And give him some praise. Because this is the day the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has so truly made. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart be acceptable in your sight, dear Lord, my creator, energizer, redeemer, my Lord of laws, in your precious name, amen. amen. And the entire body of Christ said amen once more. Amen. amen. This morning, we want to turn to the book of Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, speaking from our series of messages on where did shame originate? Amen. Where did shame originate? We want to talk from Deuteronomy this morning on that theme. Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter it is, where Moses is giving laws to the children of Israel concerning wartime. Whether you want to believe it or not, 
brothers and sisters, we are in wartime. Amen. Amen. And, and Ukraine and Russia might be at war, but I want you to know the world is at war. Amen. And we need to know this is a battlefield. Amen. And we are not fighting for righteousness. We are fighting because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ saved us from our sins. And he can save those who are waging war against him. Can I get a witness? Amen. From uh, Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, reading from verse 1 through verse 4. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and see it horses, and chariots, and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them, for the Lord thy God with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people and shall say unto them, O Israel, you approach this day unto the battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint Fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. To save, you, to, save to save you, to save you. Where, Where did shame, did shame originate? originate? Okay, from the scriptures we've just read to you from the Bible, because the Bible says, I want you to know the Bible truly and truly says that you will not suffer shame. Can you repeat that? You will not suffer shame. One more time. You will not suffer shame. Say it one more time. You will not suffer shame. Thank you. You may be seated. If and only if you are a child of God, there is no shame to be suffered. Amen. Amen, amen, because it's a very negative connotation. We must understand that God is the head of our life. And we must know that there is nothing in this world that he can't take care of. God can take care of anything that may approach us, regardless of whether it's shame, sin, doubt, or wherever we may be, or whatever we may be involved in, God has a way for his people to escape. Amen. Amen. And as one of his preachers today, I'm here to do my best to let you know that shame need to see its way out of your life. Amen. 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 Stop walking around being ashamed of who you are. Because my Bible said we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. We didn't have a God that made us and was afraid of what we was going to be. Amen. We had a God who made us and knew what we was going to be. Amen. He knew what 
Adam was going to do and what his wife Eve was going to do. So therefore, God can make a way out of anything. If he made a way for Adam and Eve, he sure will make a way for his descendants. Can I get somebody? God is just so good. So that's why, that's why the Lord led me to uh, do the run with me, 20th chapter, where Moses is talking here to the children of Israel, and it gives such great emphasis on the fact that the world is at war, not just Ukraine and Russia. Amen. The world is at war today. It seem like we can't turn the news on without looking at war, shootings, murdering, kidnapping, traffic trading, all kind of wars that are going on. Families, killing families, friends, killing friends, and people killing people for no reason at all in some emphasis, and we need to understand that this war is not going to end until Jesus come back. Don't you think not one time Ukraine and Russia have the answer to the war where they are, what they are fighting in, that they are going to get ending and complete and unanimous uh, conditions of whatever they want to have to make everything right because physical wars does not, do not solve all our problems. Amen. You might be in a physical war at some point in time, but you need to know who can solve your problem. You need to know who can step in right on time and help you out of whatever situation that you are in but you got to be real you can't be no fake now amen don't don't, don't dress up and look good and put your best cologne and perfume on and come out here and think that god smell you good and, and god look at you looking good and and god hear you speaking good don't you think all oh, that's gonna get you where you need to go you better get some real god and I'm talking about some real God. You better get some real God in your heart. And the real God I'm talking about is El Shaddai. Amen. Jehovah God. Amen. He is my God from above and not a man upstairs. He is my Father which is in heaven. And I depend on him for everything. Not just when I get in a stuck. Amen and want to get out. Just well, not just when I have a little trivial problem, not just when I desire to have something, but he is able to take in me where I need to go. He's able to pick me up and carry me when I can't carry myself. My God is just too good for that. You will not suffer shame it is. Moses giving Israel the law of warfare. Moses letting them know what to expect. Don't you know, if you don't know what to expect when you are about to go to war, you need some real directions. You need somebody to help you see your way and know that God is the way, and he is the way in our life through Jesus Christ. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father but by me. Don't you know if you don't have no Jesus, you don't have on no armor. You don't have no way to fight. If you don't have Jesus, Moses here is telling the children of Israel, look at the scripture. When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, nobody goes out to battle against friends, not in their right minds, but we do have friends go out to battle against friends. Nobody in their right mind go out to fight with friends or families, amen? He said, when you go out to fight your battle with your enemies, and you see the horses 
and the chariots and a people more than thou. He said, be not afraid. Everybody said, be not afraid. That was not everybody. Be everybody said, be not afraid. Thank you. Because of them, for the Lord thy God is with thee. If God is with you, what are you afraid of? Pastor Paul said we are more than conquerors, amen? amen. Why? Because he brought you out of Egypt. Somebody said out of Egypt. Somebody said I ain't never been no Egypt, Pastor. Well, let me tell you symbolically a scenario that will help you understand Egypt is just not a geographical area. Egypt in this message is just not a place you go to visit and you see everything looks wonderful and nice and just the scenery is beautiful. Amen. And then you might see something that's not so nice. You might hear something that might not be so good because Egypt was denounced as being down because God said, I brought you up out of Egypt. Amen, amen. Somebody here need a, a better explanation of that. Well, let's look at against the enemy. If you have enemies, you might be in Egypt, especially if you know them because the Israelites knew that they were down in Egypt when their slave master, amen, had them working sun up to sun down, amen. They, 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 they knew that they was in slavery when they didn't have their freedom to go and come as they please, amen. So we must understand that Egypt can be right in our houses. You got some people now living in a home a marvelous, beautiful home, and they have to give an account where they are going to go, what they are going to do. They have to give an account before they leave. When they come in, where did you come from? How long have you been? You are down in Egypt when somebody is always trying to find out what you are doing and how you are going about doing it when you're supposed to be free to do what you want to do. Can I get some back? Who is your enemy or enemies? Who are you at war with? What do you see as horses and chariots in your life? Amen. Amen. What kind of offense are you up against this morning? What is it that you want to get rid of that where you would rather be right now? How is it this morning with you and your family life? How is it with you and your job or your occupation? How is it with you with your school or education or me? How is it with you, amen, at the moment right now? Are you all right? Amen. I'm not going to ask anybody to raise their hand. Are you all right? Because I have to ask you, are you all right with Jesus? See, see, if you're not all right with Jesus, you, you are probably down in Egypt. Amen. And you need to come up out of Egypt. And the only way you can come up out of Egypt, you need a real deliverer. Amen. Amen. Because the Pharaoh got a hold on you, he declared that he's not going to let you go. And he want to know who is this God you talking to. But I want you to know that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the reason why I can tell Pharaoh. And Pharaoh to me is nobody but the devil. That's why I'm going to tell the devil, get behind me, Satan. I'm on my way up out of Egypt. I'm not going to stay down here because I got a deliverer. Amen. I'm not going to wallow in my sinful ways. I'm not going to wallow in my bad mistakes. I'm not going to wallow in my low self-esteem. I'm not going to wallow in no nobody care nothing about me. Whoever doesn't care anything about me, that's your business. And get, my business is to get right. 
with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I intend to do that regardless of what battle acts come upon me, regardless of who tried to defy me, regardless of who is trying to knock me down, regardless of who is smiling in my face and stabbing me in the back. And don't you know you don't need to have a dagger? Don't you know you don't need to have a knife? Because James said the tongue is a poison. The tongue can kill. The tongue can destroy. I want you to know my God got my back and I don't care what kind of poisonous tongue you have my God is my way up out of Egypt my God is too good to hold on to me and when trouble hit my life he turned me loose my God keep holding on to me while trouble is still around me He's going to make a way out of no way. Can I get some help? So we see and we, as we go to, he says in verse 2, he said, And it shall be when you come nigh to battle that the priest shall approach. <laughs> oh, this is a good part. I'm about through. Speak unto the people. Well, we know here that Moses is talking to the children of Israel and the priest should be the one to come out to give them encouragement can I get somebody Amen. so I want to know this morning what shall the preacher say to the people today the people need to know that they do not need to be ashamed because if God is on your side, whatever battle that you're in, whatever fire that you're in, you need to go through. And when you go through it, you need to come out of it smelling like a rose. You need to come out of it shining like a diamond. Because you know who delivered you out of that trouble. You know you didn't do it. You know you tried. You know you call your lawyer. You know you call your friend. You know you call somebody. You know you call mother, father, sister, brother, whoever it was. But they couldn't help you out of it. But when you decide to call on Jesus. I'm reminded here of the woman who had the issue of blood. She was down in Egypt. For 12 long years, my Bible said, she went to every doctor she could go to. And she spent every penny that she could spend. And the more money that she spent, the worse her disease got. Don't you know when you're down in Egypt and you're struggling to come out on your own, you are just spinning your wheel like wheels are in the mud, spinning and trying to come out? When you don't, when you don't know how to call on Jesus. You see, everybody know how to call on Jesus. Believe me, friends, I want to stop here and pause and tell you something. Sociology was my major and psychology was my minor. And I don't have nothing against you, sociologists. I don't have nothing against you, psychologists. I don't have nothing against you, psychiatrists. But I want you to know that Jesus had to deliver them too. And I want you to know that just like he delivered them, he can, woo, he can deliver me. And I thank him right now for taking me out of Egypt, putting me on a rock. I'm talking about a solid rock, and my rock is Jesus. My, 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 what shall the preacher say? Listen, verse 3, and I'm about to read. And, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not, do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. Okay, what shall the preacher say to the people today? First and foremost, the preacher ought to say, would you please hear? Put up your cell phones and please hear the word of God. 
take your eyes off your neighbor and please hear the word of God. Amen. We, we have a very, very, very great example here this morning. Take your eyes off of Khalil. Please take your eyes off of Khalil. The little beautiful baby that's walking down the aisle. And listen to the word of God. And know that the word of God is your only way up out of Egypt. Amen. Khalil can give a smile on your face. Can give you some love when you, she's in your arms. But Leah can't deliver you. Neither can it, she deliver me. That's why Jesus said, hear ye therefore the word of God. Hey, and Jesus even said this morning, man ought always pray and not to faint. You see, if more praying was going on, there wouldn't be as many wars going on that's going on right now. You see, I, oh my God, I'm so glad after 52 years, it took me 52 years to learn how to pray as a husband. Don't y'all be quiet, say amen. Man, I, I'm, what, what I'm trying to get you to understand is God won't mind fear to be perfected in him and he won't mind hearing to be perfected in him and I'll never be perfect. I don't care how good a husband I am. I don't care how good a father I am. I don't care how good a pastor or preacher I am. I'll never be perfect in nothing I do. But cause I want to hear the voice of God I'm going to be careful more careful after being married for 52 years how I answer my now, somebody been married here for 52 days, I know. Somebody been with somebody as a boyfriend and a girlfriend for 52 days. But you ought to be real careful how you answer and what you hear, what you answer. Or when you say something pertaining to what's being said. Don't put yourself in Egypt. Amen. Refuse Egypt. Can I get a witness? He said, and let not your hearts faint. Jesus said the other day to his disciples, if you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. And when I come, I'm going to receive you. Now you know your fear ought to be gone right now. You see, because the preacher's supposed to tell you, I'm going to receive you unto myself. And not only that, wherever I go, although the KG, KVJ says whither, wherever I go, ye shall know. Amen. And then there was doubt and Thomas. He looked at Jesus and said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And how shall we know the way? You see, he just only let us know that Jesus, Jesus said something to him to let him tell us that our little finite minds don't know everything Jesus is going to do. But our faith ought to tell us if he said he was coming back, we ought to believe it. Can I get a witness? Our faith ought to tell us not to faint. Our faith ought to tell us not to be troubled. Our faith ought to tell us not to be ashamed. Our faith ought to tell us to stand still and know that the Lord is God. Our faith ought to tell us to hold on, though we might be in trouble for just a little while longer. Everything is going to be all right. Our faith ought to tell us to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Don't you know we ought to tell people nothing but the blood in this warring land? We ought to tell people nothing but the blood in this fighting land. We ought to tell people nothing but the blood in this disagreement land. Nobody agrees with nobody. We ought to tell people nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. I bring you up out of Egypt. But we are too worried, watching, when we ought to be talking, when we ought to be saying, when we ought to be testifying, when we ought to be witnessing, 
when we ought to be sharing the love of Jesus Christ. We are too busy watching and criticizing when we ought to be trying to organize, build up, make good, see some good in somebody come up out of Egypt and see some. I'm through, y'all. I don't want to stop, but I'm through because God is so good. I can keep on preaching because my Bible tells me to tell ya. All is well. All is well with the law. I am on the battle of the Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I, I would serve him. And now I'm on. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I I would serve him till I die, and I'm on. <clears throat> I was alone and I loved, and I was a sinner too. When I heard the voice of Jesus saying, I have a work to do and I took my master's hand and I joined the Christian band and now I'm on the battlefield for oh yes I'm on the battlefield for my Lord Oh, yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I, I would serve him till I die. And now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us another opportunity to let the world know that we are not ashamed to be called saints. We are not ashamed to be called a believer. We are not ashamed to be representing you by day and by night is because we know our only way up out of any situation our circumstance is to depend and trust in you because you, you are the only source of strength and power we need because you gave your only begotten son to save us from our sins. In Jesus' name, in the glorious name of Jesus Christ, amen. Men, give God some praise. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, we are going to ask Minister Dickett to come for our altar call. You may come as you wish. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> 
Father God, my Heavenly Father, who sits high on the throne, we thank you this day for this day that you have made. Thank you, Father, for blessing us and waking us up this morning and bringing us from a mighty long way. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you for all you do in our lives every day. Thank you, Father, for never leaving us, nor forsaking us. Father God, my Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that came forth on the day. Thank you for your word, Lord, for your word was pure and your word was real and rich. We thank you for your word, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the man of God that you used to bring forth your word, Lord. Thank you for blessing him and bringing him from a mighty long way. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing Sister Jones as well, Lord. Thank you, God, for blessing all the saints of God here today. Thank you, Father. Lord, we want to pray for this on this prayer list today, God. We lift them up before you, God, everybody here. It's on the prayer list, and the ones that's here, Lord Jesus, even the ones that's not able to be here. We lift them up before you today, God, because all power belongs to you, heaven and earth. And we ask for your blessings on their lives today, God. That you would touch, heal, and deliver. Yes. Set free, God. Yes. Lead us and guide us, God. In a mighty way, Lord Jesus. Hold us in thy powerful hands, God. Oh, Lord, we can't do nothing without you, Lord Jesus. We need you right now. Need you, Father. Yes. Keep us, Lord, with your great keeping power. Like never before, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we pray, Lord Jesus, for a miracle, Lord, the entire, the entire universe. Oh, Lord, all this stuff going on around us, God, it, it, it's bad. Lord, but we know that you are uh, of everything. You, over, you overcome everything. Yeah. And we know that through you, Lord Jesus, yeah. that we can overcome our obstacles that we face in our life every day. Oh, Father God, just keep continuing to strengthen us and empower us in a mighty way, God, that we'll be able to hold on to your unchanging hand. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And we ask all these blessings. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Another glorious day. Thank you. Amen. At this time now, we're going to call our ushers and officers to come for the lifting of our tithe and our offerings. Our offertory scripture is none other than 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, reading from verse 1 through verse 8. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding breath or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor 
And though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffered long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity bonnet not itself is not puffed up. Do it not behave itself unseemly. Seek it not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoice it not in iniquity, but rejoice it in the truth. Beareth all things. Believe it all things. Hope it all things. Endureth all things. Charity never fail it, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. You may proceed in the lifting of our tithe and our offerings. All rise for the blessing of the offering, and uh, we are going to ask if one of our ushers will ask the Lord to bless our offering. Most heavenly gracious Father, thank you, Lord, for this offering. Thank you, Lord, for all those that gave. We thank you, Lord, for those that had a desire to give but could not, Lord. We ask you to continue to bless it, Lord, as Jesus. Pray. Amen. 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 One more time. Amen. This time we're going to ask our announcing clerk to please come, none other than 